What's going on guys? Welcome back to part three of our Dominaria set review. If you guys have not been checking it out, uh, be sure to uh, follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash Frank uh, where you can see all the other parts, be it white, blue, uh, red, green, colorless, artifact, land, everything. So uh, yeah, make sure to follow me. They're going up at 9 p.m. Eastern every day until, until Dominaria comes out. So starting with black today, we have Blessing of Bells and, Bells and Lock. Bells and Lock. Uh, one black for a target creature gets plus one, plus two, plus one. It's all, if it's legendary, it gains lifelink until end of turn. This is reasonable for a limited. I'd play this. I don't think this is making it into constructed. Usually, cards like this uh, only make it into constructed if they give you indestructible or if they return your guy from the graveyard, like supernatural stamina. And then very rarely, like you have to have the right components for a, like a mono black aggro deck. So, um... Meh. And Cabal Evangel. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. You and Cleric. Cabal Paladin. Whenever you cast a Historic Spell, Cabal Paladin deals two damage to each opponent. It's actually pretty good. In limited. I mean, like, you're probably going to play this in limited if you get one. I don't know if you play two. Depends on the, the amount of historic spells you get, I guess. Um, but if you have a couple, I mean, maybe if you have like like six, I don't know. So looking at the set right now, I don't know how many historic spells there's going to be, right? Or in a deck, in a given deck. I'm just, I'm just grooming myself here. Uh, in a given deck. So it's hard to say like whether I'd play this or not. Because what if you have like, if you have like two historic spells, it's just not very good. Maybe you'll get two damage through at some point, right? But maybe not. Um... I think it just depends on how many historic spells you have. This is like, this is like the four two in uh, Battle for Zendikar block that that like did stuff with your allies. And if you don't have any allies, it's terrible. But if you have a bunch of historic spells, it, it starts to get really good. Caligo Skin Witch. One three for two mana. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, each opponent discards two cards. Okay, this is a card we've pretty much seen before. It's a one three for two, or it's a one three for four makes them discard two. This is another card that, like, if you have it, you're probably just going to play it, right? Because the value for 1-3 for 2 is just fine. And late in the game, it's not blank. So. It doesn't work with lands. It says cast. It doesn't say it says, uh, yep, whenever you cast a historic spell. So it can't be lands. Good to know. Cast down. Two mana. Destroy target. Non-legendary creature. This card is unbelievable. It is also an instant, which is very, very valuable. Um... What did I say? I said six mana, right? I mean, I knew it was six mana. I don't know. I don't know what I said, but I meant six, obviously. Uh, destroy target on legendary creature. Card's amazing. Card will see infinite constructed play. Chainer's torment. Uh, obviously, we're hearkening back to Chainer's Chainer's edict. I'm going to say that before we even read the card. Uh, four mana. First step, you deal two damage to each opponent, and you gain X... Oh, I, I'm incorrect. No no Chainer's Edict uh, hearkening back to here. Um, so, first effect, you deal two damage to each opponent, and you gain two life. Okay. Second effect, you gain two more life. So, you've dealt four damage, and you've gained two life. For the third effect, you create an XX Black Nightmare Horror Creature, where X is half your life total rounded up. It deals X damage to you. So, let's see. play this on turn four. You have 14 life. Um, you gain two, you gain two, you're at 18, you make a 9-9, nine, nine, and you go to 9. I'm not thrilled about it just because, like, it's probably going to die, right? I don't know. The point is, so look at it this way, though. Like, before you cast this, you were only at 14 life. You weren't at 18 life. So you're only technically losing 5 life that wasn't attributed to this card. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think that's terrible. I don't think it's great. I don't think you're going to be constructing with this. Like, for one more mana, you just get Scarab God, and it's just not even close. Dark Bargain. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Dark Bargain deals two damage to you. This card's actually really good. I don't think it's really good, but it's good. It's it's a black card. It's a four mana draw spell. And this is this will see play. I guarantee you that. Um, there was actually... We were talking about this on Facebook. I was just in a comment thread. 
and uh, people are like, this is not very good. If this costs one less, it would see play. I'm like, if this, if this costs one less, it would be unbelievable. But this is, you got to consider this is on par with similar four mana. Black four mana card drawing spells are always going to be worse than blue four mana drawing spells. That's just the way it goes. But this is on par with um, your typical black, your, like your typical four mana draw spell, right? Inspiration, which I actually did see some constructed play at some point, drew you two cards for four mana. Glimmer of Genius draws you two cards for four mana, but it lets you scry two. Dark Bargain essentially lets you scry one and draw two cards. And putting the cards in your graveyard is actually relevant. So, I mean, this is great. Like, you can go end of turn, look at three cards, put two of them into your hand. That's awesome. This card's amazing. The worst part about this card is that it deals two damage to you. But for four mana, this is a, this is a bargain. This is a dark bargain. So... Death Bloom Thalid. Three mana for a 3-2. When Death Bloom Thalid dies, create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token. This card's fine and limited. I would 100% play this every time I got it. It's a 3-2 for three. This is a black creature whose power is uh, higher than its expected power. And it, it leaves you with a, a little cutie when you're done. So, Demonic Vigor. One black. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. When it dies, return it to its owner's hand. This is okay. I don't hate this card. I think the I think getting a guy back is pretty reasonable. I don't like the two for one. It's actually not even two for one potential, really. I'm trying to think of how many ways there are to get rid of a creature that isn't killing it, right? Um, I think this card's actually fine. I'd probably play one of these. You can just get your guy back, right? And it makes it bigger. It's not even just like put it on there, then you get it back when it dies. Like you actually, it gets it gets bigger. So I can see playing that card. Demon Lord Bells and Lock is probably one of my favorite cards in this set. Cast Out does get rid of creatures, but we're clearly talking about, this is not a constructed card. This is a limited card. I am talking about Dominaria Limited where Cast Out is not going to have any place. So Demon Lord... Flying Trample, 6-6 six, six for 6 is a great deal. Uh, I will play 6-6 six, for 6 with Flying and Trample all day. Uh, and then you have when Demon Lord Bezel, Bells and Lock enters the battlefield, exile cards from the top of your library into exile a non-land card, then put that card into your hand. If the card's converted mana cost is 4 or greater, repeat this process. It deals 1 damage to, each, to you for each card put into your hand this way. Uh, it's relevant that it doesn't deal 1 damage to you for each card exiled this way. It deals one damage to you for each card X for each card put into your hand this way. So if you're like swip swip swip, scarab god, okay, swip swip swip, uh, glimmer of genius, okay, swip swip swip, nicobolus, okay, swip swip swip, essence scatter, okay. I just threw nicobolus, scarab god, and glimmer for three life. It's very good. This card is pretty strong, and you're gonna always at least draw one card. So this is like basically a mull drifter, like with flying and trample and it's a six six. This card's bonkers. I like I like this card a lot. I I, I want to go Scarab God into this guy and have him draw me at least three cards. So also you have like ravenous chupacabras and things. There's actually actually a ton of things um that you can get with this guy. Divest. Target player reveals his or her hand. You may choose an artifact or creature card from it that player discards it. This card's great. Uh, this is a basically a reverse duress, right? Whereas, like, instead of a non-creature non spell, you get a creature spell, but you can also get an artifact, too, which is pretty good. So. Uh, when you want to exile cards, it goes whip, 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 whip. I think that's what I did? I don't know. It's hard to say. Sound effects are weird. Yeah, this card's great. I can see playing this card in standard, especially because creatures are really scary. Uh, yeah, it's it's basically a demise, except instead of a planeswalker, you get a, an artifact. Um, but I think this format's a little bit different than the one that was, uh, that was present when Demise was, was legal both times, I think. And I think creatures are what you're afraid of in this format. So. Dreadshade. We just took a look at this on stream earlier. Black, black, black for a 3-3. Three, three. This is the black card in this cycle. We've already seen blue, 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 and white, white, white. Uh, Dreadshade gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is just obviously a throwback to Nantuko Shade. Uh, which was the biggest, baddest black creature in the mono black deck back then. It was black, black for a 2-1. That could get plus one, plus one until end of turn for each black. So the stats are, are you know, are on par. They've scaled respectively. And um, I don't know. I don't see this card seeing play in standard. 
Like, you just don't want to have triple black. You don't want to have three black mana. <laughs> like, I don't know. But, on the other hand, like, the creature's not bad, right? But it's also a different time than it was when Nantuko Shade was, was prevalent. You know? I mean... So, I don't know. Like, I think the card's not bad. I think it's, uh... I think if you have a mono, if you have a cube and you have a mono black devotion archetype in the cube, you can play it there. If you play mono black devotion in um, modern, maybe this is better than Night Veil Spectre. But who knows? This could also be. <laughs> what if these are hints at like Theros being the next block that's reprinted? Somebody mentioned this in in chat the other day, and I was like, eh, I don't know. It seems too soon. I don't think Theros was that successful. But if there is a Theros set on the horizon, like maybe as the next block. Or even like the next couple blocks, um, having all these like the dread shade and the 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 gin in blue or the the white the white one, like seems fine. Like I mean, maybe these are just maybe these are just hints, or they could just be uh, homages to devotion. Either way, Drudge Sentinel, uh, not to be confused, just Dredge Skeleton, two one for a three mana, three mana for a two one. Tap Drudge Skeleton, it gains Indestructible on turn. So this guy's blocking. You can attack with this guy, give him Indestructible. You can block with this guy, then give him Indestructible. The tapping of is interesting because, well, it's kind of like working like Regenerate wants to work, right? Like when somebody goes to the Lightning Bolt your guy and you Regenerate it, it puts a Regeneration Shield on it. And then when the Lightning Bolt resolves, it removes the Regeneration Shield and then the creature taps. So this is an interesting way to get around Regenerating and still having the same kind of effect. Right, because you're like tap it and give it indestructible. This is an interesting way to stop printing uh, regeneration, which was sometimes confusing for people, and and have like the same outcome. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this is what regeneration looks like in the future. Stop looking at yourself. The Eldest Reborn, an uncommon. This is... See, I look at these Saga cards, and like the art on this card, this does not look like an uncommon. So, uh, five mana, we have each opponent sacrifices a creature Planeswalker. So on turn five, you're like, sack a dude. On turn six, each opponent discards a card, so you lost the card now. On turn seven, put target creature or Planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. I actually like this card a lot. Um, the value is very good. So, like... See, Alan, like you say, I don't like that version of Regenerate. It's so wordy, but Regenerate itself is very wordy. Um, it's just a lot, but the wording is all, it's all hidden in rules text, right? And that's confusing for new players because the wording of Regenerate is not necessarily easy. Does that make sense? Like, it's not, it's confusing, right? So, like, I'd rather have, I'd rather have a card be a little more wordy, but have all the wording up front so that people can understand it a little more. Like, I think, I think regeneration is actually more wordy than that. It's just hidden, which makes it difficult. What's up, Noble Phoenix? Um, I like this card a lot. I'm a big fan of reanimation spells. And um, this actually pulls creatures from your graveyard or their graveyard. So, um, you know, if they if they sack their 1-1 one, one, and then they discard a 2-2 two, two, and they just don't have anything you want, you can definitely pull from your graveyard. This also reanimates Planeswalkers, which is pretty insane because it's not a card that reanimation spells have typically done before. You do have to wait till, you know, till the third counter is removed. But being able to regenerate, reanimate a Planeswalker is pretty amazing. Um, I can only imagine putting their Chandra into play with this or, you know, their uh, their Karn. That seems pretty sweet. So um, I'm a big fan of this card. I think this card's sweet. I also think, like, outside of the reanimation ability, making them sack a guy and making them discard a card is pretty sweet. I agree with you. Reanimating a Planeswalker does seem like a mythic ability. It's very weird. Eviscerate. Four mana, destroy target creature at sorcery speed. This is basically just Impale, right? From uh, Rivals of Ixalan. Let's find out. Impale. Sorcery speed, destroy target creature. It's the same exact card, except it costs one black instead of two black. Either way, you're not putting it in your constructed decks. You will 100% pick this in limited. You will take as many as you can get, but uh, kind of funny. Feral Abomination, Death Touch 5-5 five, five for 6. <sighs> it's weird to me when 5-5s five, have Death Touch, because I'm like, this dude's big enough to kill anything anyway. Why do you need Death Touch? So you can kill a 6-6? Six, six? All right, I guess. But then you could just have a 1-5 or a 1-6. Like, whatever. 
I guess if they triple block it with like a 2-2, two, two, a 3-3, three, three, and a 3-3, three, three, like you can kill all of them. But why would you just block with a 3-3 three, three, and 2-2? Two, two? I don't know. I don't know. That's not the point. The point is, this card's fine. I'll play one in limited, but I, I don't understand death touch on large creatures like this. I guess it's, I mean, it feels mostly flavor-wise. If you don't have trample, especially, because if this is a 5-5 five, five death toucher with trample, then okay, you can't chump block it anymore. You block with a 1-1, one, one, or you block even with a 1-4, I deal one death touch damage and I deal four damage to you. So, I don't know. Final parting. Five mana. Search your library for two cards. Put one in your hand and the other in your graveyard. This card is great. Uh, I don't know if this card's going to see constructed play, but I like it. So, I'm going to mention it now. Um, I think being able to put one card in your graveyard is pretty huge. Um, especially in a format like... I don't know. If, I don't know if this five mana tutor is going to see play in modern, but like I do like the at the the prospect of being able to go final parting, put um, Elesh Norn into my graveyard, and you know unbearable rights in my hand, which is pretty huge. I mean, it takes two turns, but it's just, it's almost the same as gift ungiven, right? Gifts ungiven, right? Where you're just except you don't have to play blue now. You can just play this, put a creature in your graveyard, put a spell in your put a, put the the reanimation spell in your hand. Like, this is just a two-for-one. Like, this is just the the whole anim reanimation combo in one card, which is really cool, especially for an uncommon. So, I don't know. I like this card a lot. I could see playing this in standard. Like, searching for a Scarab God and putting a Ravenous Chupacabra in your graveyard? That seems cool. All right, well, now I got one reanimation, dude. Seems good. Fungal Infection, one mana. Look at this art, man. <laughs> Target creature, it's a negative one, negative until end of turn. Create a one one sapperling. That's a good deal. I like this instant. This is a great blocking. This is a great combat trick. I would play this in limited 100%. Um, Josu Vess Lich Knight. Um, so I've saw I've seen my my boys Shaheen Sarani's thoughts on this, and I'm pretty much of the same of the same mindset here. Four five for four is incredible with menace. That's a, just a good threat by itself. Um, but also you can kick this on turn ten. And uh, you create eight two twos. <laughs> they don't come into play tapped, so they're not terrible zombies, and they have menace. So basically, if you play this on turn ten and they don't have either a counter spell or a board wipe, they're basically dead. And this card is bonkers. I love this card a lot. I like that it's rare and not mythic because it's a very very powerful card. Um, this is a great win condition for a uh, control deck, especially because it plays great at different points on the curve. If you really need it on turn four, you can have it. If you want to play it on turn 10, go ahead, win the game, knock yourself out. Kazarov, Sengir Pureblood, seven mana for a four, four. Wow, that's, we're looking, we're looking pretty pricey here. So I imagine this guy's gonna get counters. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on Karazov, sure. Four, four flyer, deal two damage to target creature. This card's cool. I, I might consider playing this in cube just because it does a lot of things. I can't see it ever replacing Olivia Voldaren. If you get this in limited, good God, please windmill slam this thing because it's insane. Um, Yeah, Neros, this actually does say kick it and win. 8-2-2 two, two Black Knights. That's 16 power. Yeah, this card, you're not going to be playing this in Constructed. And you... I don't even know if you play it without red. You probably do in limited. It's a 4-4 flyer for 7. It's not the best rate. But it's whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt damage by anything. So you play this guy. You attack with three other dudes. As long as your guys are getting are getting damage in, like, you're, they're getting counters. This guy's getting counters. So he's probably going to be a 6-6 six, six or 7-7 seven, seven by the time he attacks. So, And he is legendary and he is a vampire, which are, which are relevant. So, yeah, I can see that. I can see definitely playing this in limited, even if you're not red, because it's just a strong ability. And if you can play red, good lord, this guy's just a nightmare. This feels like a kind of a Drana-like card, except for the fact that he costs seven, but other than that, very strong. Knight of Malice. We saw the white version of this guy in, uh, in our other set review. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. First strike, Hexproof from white. Okay, can't be targeted by Oust, can't be targeted by... Uh, Cast out, can't be targeted by Journey to Nowhere. Knight of Malice gets plus one, plus O, as long as any player controls a white permanent. So if, you're, if your opponent's going to be targeting this with white spells, they probably have white permanents as well, so. What up, Immersion? Uh, this card seems great. 
nothing really much to say about that. Lich's Mastery, six mana. This card seems crazy, and I really like it. Um, Hexproof, uh, that's pretty good. You can't lose the game. All right, that's great news. Whenever you gain life, draw that many cards. That's all I've ever wanted to do in Magic. Oh, Sphinx's Revelation, for seven, I'll draw 14. Whenever you lose life... Uh, for each one life you lost, exile a permanent you control or a card from your hand or graveyard. Uh, when Lich's Mastery leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. Thankfully, I don't imagine there's many ways to get rid of a hexproof enchantment. Um, other than, like, Oblivion Stone, right? And you can't actually use the white one, the white one that destroys all non-legendary permanents, because it is legendary. This card seems really interesting. Um, this reminds me of, like, kind of a Demonic Pact type card, where, like... You're taking a big risk, but you also have a have a pretty big reward. And, um, you know, if you're in control of the game, this kind of seals the deal. Oh yeah, Dromoka's command, but we're not. I'm talking about like standard. Uh, I don't I don't see I don't see the six mana card scene playing modern really, or any older formats. I could see putting this in a cube though. That seems pretty sweet. But I, I just like playing with cool cards in cubes. So, um, yeah, I don't know. You can't lose the game is a pretty strong line of text there. And, um, Lingering Phantom, six mana, five, four. When you cast a historic spell, you may pay black. If you do return Lingering Phantom from your graveyard to your hand, this is actually fine. This actually seems like, uh, well, are there any good ways to gain life? There doesn't, there really have to be. Like, you just draw that many cards if you gain life. Otherwise, you just play the game like normal, right? Also, yeah, Gifted Aetherborn. That's a good dude. Or you can just play the, like, the... You can play the crappy cards that are just, like, gain six life for two mana. And then you're like, I'm just drawing six cards. Cool. Um, yeah, or you can go to two life and then just play that. And then your opponent's like, oh, well... That's a really nice buffer. Um, yeah, guys, like, I don't I don't think this card's gonna be tier one. I just think it's a cool card. Like, it's just a fun card. It does some cool stuff, and I can see this actually, like, being a sideboard inclusion in certain control decks. Like, if a control deck's about to die, and they slam this, and they have, like, a grip full of cards, and, like, 15 lands out, <laughs> like, you're in trouble, man. It doesn't seem great for you. Whenever you... Yeah, this guy seems fine. I would play this unlimited. I would play at least one of these unlimited. It's expensive on face value, 5-4 for 6 mana, but... Um, being able to get a, a creature that size back just by casting your spells naturally anyway is pretty good. Uh, Phyrexian Scriptures. Four color... I don't know what I'm saying. Four mana. Uh, it is a mythic. That's what I was looking at. Put a plus one plus one counter up to one creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. Alright, I got a, I got an artifact. So I'll target your Phyrexian Obliterator. Now it's a 6-6, six, six, and it's an artifact guy. So you, your turn, you can attack me for 6. Okay, I take 6. My turn, destroy all non-artifact creatures. Oh, I'm putting on my own guy then. Okay, cool. I'll put it on my Phyrexian Obliterator. Your turn, you're not attacking me because I have a Phyrexian Obliterator. It's a 6-6. Six, six. Destroy all non-artifact creatures. Everything else dies. And exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. That's interesting. What? That seems unconnected to the other two. Hmm. This is just interesting because on the second mode, on the second counter, like, it's just damnation, right? Like, it's a damnation that you could potentially selectively choose one of your own creatures to survive. Huh. That seems fine. This card seems good. Rat Colony. Two mana for a 2-1. It gets plus 1, plus 0 oh for each other rat you control. A deck can have or rat colonies. This is just throwback to Relentless Rats, which is sweet. I like that all these cards uh, reference other cards. Uh, so it's kind of like a time spirally set, which is pretty sweet. I like that. Because it's bringing, it brings the nostalgia up, you know? Um, yeah, this card's fine. You're going to have guys at FNM playing their, their rat colony decks, so... Right of Belzenok. Belzenlock. I always... Oh my god, I'm going to say it. I, I'm going to say it wrong every single time. Four mana again for a saga. A rare. <sighs> this one's weird. So you pay four mana, and you get two zero one one clerics. Okay. I'm on board. 
fine. Turn five, you get two more zero one clerics. Turn six, you get a six six black demon with flying and trample. It doesn't even have haste. And this guy says at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature. If you can't, it deals six damage to you. Like, this seems bad. I hate to I hate to be the negative Nancy, but this seems not good. Like that's, this assumes that you're not going to have to block with any of these creatures. You're spending your whole turn four to get two zero ones. Um, yeah, it's obviously a callback to Lord of the Pit, but it's not. It's not. I don't think it's that great in in practice, right? Like, let's look at a, like Desecration Demon was a six six for four mana. This is a six six for technically like it's still four mana, but you don't get it until turn six. Plus, you, you have to sacrifice a creature every turn. Desecration Demon, your opponent had to sacrifice a creature every turn. And they didn't, like, you didn't take six damage if they couldn't, right? Like, you, with this one, this is actually a, a, you actually have to have more creatures. I don't know. This is, like, a, there's a lot of work going on. And, and, like, I don't feel like you get a lot up front for four mana. I don't want to wait till turn six. Because then, like, on turn six, you get the demon. But then you can't even attack with it till turn seven. So, all right. Would I play this in limited? Probably. You're getting four guys and a 6-6 six, six flying trampler. Sure. Yeah, they can't choose to tap it, right? But they could just kill it. <laughs> I don't know. Settle the score. Four mana, exile target creature, put two loyalty counters on a planeswalker you control. This card seems sweet. Um, I, like, they have two four mana uh, sorceries that deal with creatures. Um... Which is interesting. One is an instant, one is a... Or one is a, a common, one is an uncommon. One costs double black, one costs single black. Putting two loyalty counters on a Planeswalker control is also pretty sweet. You take this in limited every time, even if it even if you don't have a Planeswalker, obviously. But this in Constructed might actually be playable. Can you imagine, like, playing, like, a Chandra? Plusing Chandra for to five. Next turn, you kill one of their guys, put Chandra to seven, and then ultimate Chandra? Like, it's interesting. It's I don't know if it's great. Like, it's four mana. It does exile the creature. So, like, you can target their Scarab. You, you play Chandra. They play Scarab God. You untap, exile their Chandra. Or exile their Scarab God. And then you can ultimate your Chandra? Like, it does a lot of things. Two loyalty counters on a Planeswalker is a lot. Again, I don't know. Like, for removal, it's expensive and it's sorcery speed. But it does what you want. It exiles the creature. And two loyalty counters is a lot. So, I don't know. I I would not I would not be surprised if I saw this card in decks. And then my opponents started ultimating their planeswalkers significantly sooner than I expected. Soul Salvage. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. This is pretty boring. Three mana. This could be an instant. It's not. It's fine. Whatever. Stronghold Confessor. One one for one. It's a 1-1 one, one menace for one. If it is kicked, it enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters. So it's either a 1-1 one, one one, one menace for one or a 3-3 three, three menace for four. Both of those modes are fine. I think you'd play this as a 3-3 three, three menace most of the time. Or if you just need a cheap blocker in the late game when you want to spend your mana on something else. Seems fine. Yeah, DC Sports 8. I'm not saying it competes with Vraska's Contempt, but there are certain decks where you're like, where you just rather ultimate, you'd rather put counters on your Planeswalker than potentially exile theirs. I don't know. Like I'm saying, it's not, it's an interesting, it's an interesting card. Thalid Omnivore. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Sacrifice another creature. And it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If a Sapperling was sacrificed this way, gain two life. I mean, it's a 3-3 three, three for four. I'd still play it in limited. It can get bigger. I think that's fine. This could actually get very big. I you you 100 percent play this in limited, so. Thalid Soothsayer. Speaking of Thalid, sacrifice a creature, draw a card. Two, three, for four. Also gonna play this. Like your creature's gonna die, you sacrifice it, draw a card. It can sacrifice itself, which is a very relevant aspect of cards like this. Torgar Famine Incarnate, otherwise known as Alex Straza. As an additional cost, to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. 
This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrificed this way. So I sacrifice three guys. This is black, black. When Torgar, Famine Incarnate, enters the battlefield, up to one target player's life total becomes half their starting life total rounded up. I don't know. So you play Torgar. If you're at 7, you can go up to 15. If they're at 19, they can go to 10. Oh, you're not going to 15, you go to 10. I'm sorry, like, I'm actually convinced this is just Alex Straza from, from Hearthstone, which uh, sets sets either player's life total to 15 when it comes into play. And Hearthstone, you start at 30, 30 life. Um, so it's basically just, this is a, this is a large eight mana creature. Alex Straza also costs like eight or nine. Uh, this is a large eight mana creature that also sets your life total to half of what you started with. So yeah, Alex Straza costs nine. Um, so it's just similar. It's very, it's kind of funny. Um, I don't think this card is that good. <laughs> um, like I don't want to pay eight mana for this, but I also don't want to sacrifice three guys. Like, so if they're at 14 life, you deal them four. If they're at two or you, you don't, you never really want to target them. It has no evasion. I don't know. Ergaros, the empty one. Six mana for a four, three. Flying when Ergaros, the empty one, deals combat damage to a player. That player discards a card at random. If that player can't, you draw a card. This card's amazing. I will play this in limited 1000% of the time. Four power flyer for six mana in limited. A little bit overcosted, but the, the ability is very strong. If they have no cards in hand, you're getting a card. You're getting a card one way or another, whether it's them discarding or you drawing. That's pretty sweet. Uh, you have to ask yourself why I play Hearthstone because it's enjoyable. Uh, it's an enjoyable game. Vicious Offering. Two mana. Kicker, Sacrifice, Creature. Okay, so target creature gets negative two, negative two. This card's great already. Uh, that's a solid rate for removal spell. It's just behind Disfigure, which is playable. If it was kicked, they get negative five, negative five. So if you sack a dude, it could be an irrelevant creature. It could be anything. Um, it's Dismember. It's, it's either Disfigure or Dismember, so that's pretty cool. I think this card's fine. You'll play this in limited. I don't think it's it's going to see constructed play because it uh, it's competing with a lot of stronger cards. If you need a sacrifice outlet for some reason, maybe it's good. Whisper, Blood Liturgist. Four mana for a 2-2. Two, two. Mm, you're, not, you're not selling me yet. Sack two creatures. Return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That's not terrible. I don't hate it. Um, but I'm not impressed by it either. I don't want to spend four mana for a 2-2 unless it's like Oracle of Moldia or Venser. And uh, then I have to sacrifice two other creatures. Actually, you could sacrifice this to itself, which is nice. But still, that's still a lot of creatures. Like, you're still losing two guys. You have to have something in the graveyard that's worth getting back. I think maybe we play this, but in limited. In limited, not in constructed. But I'm on the fence. I'm really on the fence here. Windgrace Acolyte. Five mana for a 3-2 flyer. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely cards where you're chump blocking with two saprolings. You can sack them both to return a 5-5 five, five or a 6-6 six six, six, six or something. I think it has uses. It definitely has uses. It's definitely a powerful guy in limited. Um, five mana for a 3-2 flyer. When it enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard and gain three life. Why am I doing that? I don't know if I'm playing this card unless I'm like playing a really aggressive deck, but in limited, I really don't want to be putting milling myself for, for like no real reason. If we have um, reanimation targets, I think it's fine. But, or, you know, cards that reanimate. I, I don't know. I want for the, for my three two flyers in limit. I want to pay four. I want to pay four mana, not five mana. I don't think the the arbitrary ability of gaining three life and and milling myself for three really makes up for that. But oh, the old frog spirit himself, Yargle, Glutton of Urborg, nine three for five mana. I mean, I don't know what I don't know what else to say about Yargle here. It's a five three. What are you gonna do? All right, moving on. Yogmoth's Vile Offering. A plus because it's a cat? What's a cat? This is a cat warrior? Wow, I had no idea actually. That's interesting. Yogmoth's... I'm also not used to Leonin being... Is it a Leonin? Acolytes of the Lost Windgrace fight to keep Urborg relics out of Cabal hands. Maybe it's a Leonin. I don't know. I, it's probably not a Leonin. I, don't, I have no idea. I'm just used to all cats and magic being Leonins. Uh, Yogmoth's Vile Offering, 5 mana... 
Legendary sorcery, sure, can only cast it if you have a legendary creature or planeswalker. Put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker. Exile Yogg Monster. This card is amazing. Um, this is just another great removal spell. Uh, you're destroying one of their creatures or planeswalkers, and you're getting back one of your creatures and planeswalkers. That's pretty sweet. I want to just put Nicol Bolas in the graveyard. I want to I want to return Nicol Bolas to play, and then I want to exile your Chandra up. God, I really have a, a, a vendetta against Chandra's. No, because the other, the other example was Chandra's on our side, and we were ultimating her on, you know, turn five or whatever. Turn six. Yeah, turn five, actually. Um, and... Worth noting, one of the big uh, one of the big stipulations for for reanimation effects is is it your graveyard or is it any graveyard? And this one is a graveyard, so you can actually pull back one of their things and destroy one of their creatures. Or this this card's amazing. Yeah, it also says up to, so you don't actually have to choose. You can only you can only do one of these modes if you have it. You don't actually have to have targets for both. This card hits all the marks. Like it's not forcing you to do both things and have two targets. Um, it's not forcing you to choose one out of your graveyard. It's not forcing you to choose a creature and a planeswalker. This card's great. I am a fan of Yogmoth's Vile Offering. Why are all the cards I like costing four and five mana? And that's it. All right, that was the last of black card. Black seems really sweet. I'm looking forward to playing some blue black control decks or Esper control decks in uh, in, a st in standard right now. So uh, hopefully the set bears bears that out. Um, Hopefully you guys will be doing some pre-releases. If you guys haven't done so, check me out on Patreon. Check me out on YouTube. All of those sites slash Frank Lepore, YouTube.com slash Frank Lepore, Patreon.com slash Frank Lepore. And I will see you guys uh, next time for the Red Server. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.